it is Saturday morning. It is the day after I got back from my car camping trip. I slept really well last night, apart from being woken up in the middle of the night by a bunch of lads having a fight out in the street outside. Lovely. But it was Friday night and the pubs are open and that's what they do. Um, can't stop thinking about that trip. The beach. I've had a look back at the pictures already. It's just so nice. Morecambe was such a lovely place. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. It's just lovely. It was so clean and the beaches were amazing. But it's now Saturday morning. The weather has really turned. Um, and I've got to get back to normal routine. I've got to do my double clean this morning. I had a vintage sale yesterday, so I've got that packaged up ready to put into the post lockers which I shall do on my way out and I have a ton of vintage stuff to go through so the elderly couple that I do the cleaning for I've been sorting out their cellar but um, she's got a bit bored of that and she's asked me to start sorting out her wardrobe because she has lots of impulse purchase clothes that she's never worn lots of shoes there's loads of bags and she wants to clear out space so last week last wednesday when i was there i started to go through it she went through the clothes and pulled out things she didn't want um we only went through one section of the wardrobe and i think i've got about 10 things the good thing is they're larger sizes which always sell really well on vintage and four or five of them still have the labels on the problem is she's one of these people that will go into a shop, see something, see something she likes, she buys it, but she doesn't try it on. So then she gets it home, realises it doesn't fit, and it goes in the wardrobe. She doesn't take anything back. So there are all these brand new clothes just sitting there doing nothing. And when I started sorting all the, the bags and the shoes, which have been slung in the bottom of the wardrobe and have been piling up, um, we found some receipts in one or two of the bags. And that stuff's been piling up in there for about 12 years, or at least 12 years. So I've brought home, I reckon, about 20 pairs of shoes. One of the problems is that she has this, like, water on her legs. So her legs are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And her feet have got bigger and bigger and bigger. So as her feet have got bigger, she's bought new shoes. And then they've probably had, like, maybe one wear. And then she's had to move on. So I've got about 20 pairs of shoes, all between the sizes of five and seven. And some of them are good brands, like some of them are the hotter brand. I don't know how fashionable they are, but most of them have only been worn once or twice. I sold a pair of Skechers, um, the ones that you slip in. They're not, they're not the, the Skechers slip-ins, but they didn't have laces. And I think they've only been worn once. And they're not a cheap shoe. And I sold those on Vintage um, not so long ago. So I have got a ton of stuff to go through. Some of it needs cleaning. A lot of the shoes and things that were slung in the bottom of the wardrobe have gathered dust. Um, but they're all cleanable. And because they've really never been worn, they're cleaning up really well. So today I'm going to start hopefully going through some of the clothes and things and getting those online. I know that some of you do sh look at my vintage store. And particularly if you are a larger size and you're looking for clothes. Um, I think the clothes that I've got are anything between an 18 and a 24. From the, I haven't had a good close look, but from a glimpse that's what I've seen. As I say, some of it's never been worn. Most of it's never been worn. Some of it still has the actual labels on. I have a ton of editing to do as well. I still have my last week in the life to edit. I've got the car camping to do, which is gonna take days, I mean, there was so much footage and none of it got lost on the camera which was good so I need to go through all of that as well um, busy busy but all this vintage stuff is going to keep me very busy for quite a while I think because it's, it's not just listing it there's so much of it that needs you know just a little clean or you know, roof, a few cobwebs, that sort of thing. 
Some of the bags are really nice. They're like those little, that really practical ladies' bags. So they've got lots of pockets and um, I've commandeered one for myself, which I thought I might keep, but I took it on my trip and I didn't use it. So I might sell that anyway. It was a nice little waterproof. I ran it under the shower just to clean the dust off it and it's waterproof, so that's really nice. But there's a really nice brown leather one as well. I'm not selling everything for ridiculous prices. It's more a case of you want it gone. But don't take the mickey because some of this stuff's really not, it's really nice. It's new. You couldn't get it at the prices I'm going to put it on in the shops, which is what vintage is all about. And when it's brand new with tags on, you know, come on. Anyway, so that's my day sorted. And probably my whole weekend. If I get all my cleaning done today, that means I've got tomorrow... To do lots of vintage stuff as well which is really good um yeah and i'm just getting back into the routine i want to go back to morecambe bay i already miss it i don't know if it's just because it's the beach and i haven't been to the beach in years properly and i think it just captured my imagination because it was such beautiful weather and it was such a well-kept place and the beaches were incredible and but I feel like that's somewhere that I could go back to again and again and just enjoy. I mean, it's not exactly a short journey to get there. It's an hour and a half, but it could be a lot longer. And it is kind of a day trip, really, isn't it? You could do it in a day trip. But we'll see. Um, so, get on with work and back to routine it's always depressing but we can always fit in another car camping trip if we need another escape i think yesterday my neighbors finally moved in it's been a week since they got the keys and started moving in and they've basically been cleaning every day and i don't know how resolved that has been Um, I feel like they maybe reluctantly moved in. So, uh, there's movement and things going on, but it's not like loud, loud. Anyway, let's get on back to routine. <laughs> Such is life. It is Sunday morning. I have been over to Morrison's, done a little little haul. I used my new credit card, so this shop won't have to be paid for for another nine months, which is pretty cool. Today we spent six pounds fifty-eight, which is quite a lot, but got some good stuff in here. So let's start with the healthy stuff. An iceberg lettuce was one was 89p down to 62p. Got some more mushrooms, big punnet again. These were £1.19 down to 60p. Here's a fun thing. Never seen anything like this as a deal. Um, slow cooked ribs. Quite a big box. These were £2.50 down to a pound. Now they need to be cooked in the oven, 35 minutes apparently. I don't know why they were on the reduced section, because they've got a date of the 11th of October for a use-by date. Which is a bit weird. Anyway, what I'm going to do is cook all this up, divide it up into sections and then freeze it as meal-sized options. I'll probably do that today. And I might use some of that today as well. I also have some coleslaw. This is Morrison's Best. This was £2.50 down to a pound, and that's one of the big tubs. I also bought egg mayonnaise. Was £1.89, now 56p. Really into egg mayonnaise at the moment. 
I also got uh, a cheddar and chive dip. This was £1.35 down to 68p. These sorts of dips make really good stirring sauces for my stir fry meals. So that's why I buy those. I don't really dip anything in them. Um, I did get some more eggs. Uh, £1.50 down to £1.12. Because on breakfast days, which generally is Wednesday and occasionally a Tuesday, I'm doing a couple of boiled eggs, so um, or hard-boiled eggs, so I'm noticing that my egg my egg supply is starting to drop. Got two packs of four apples. These were one pound down to 40p each, so that's another crumble I can do at some point. And the last thing I got was carrots. These were 50p down to 20p. So that's not a bad, uh, quite a healthy haul actually, considering. I will put all the usual information up there. And then you can see what I would have paid if I bought things full price and how much I've saved. Uh, yeah, so I've used my new credit card for the first time. That's now activated the contact list. So when I next go in, I don't have to worry about using a PIN. So that's pretty good. Um, nine months of not having to pay for food and other household bills would be pretty good. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about, my last few videos I've mentioned about how I've I got a guaranteed acceptance for a new credit card through ClearScore. Nine months of 0% interest on purchases and they've given me a £1,500 limit. So that's pretty cool. So that's nine months of, instead of paying my credit card bills at the end of every month, that money can stay in my savings account for nine months and I'll pay it back then. Uh, came back past the neighbours. The neighbours have now moved in downstairs um, and I not sure if it's temporary or what's going on but they might be worse than my previous neighbours so they've also resorted to keeping all the blinds and the windows shut even though they've only just moved in and on the windows where they have no blinds they have stuck black plastic sacks up against all the windows it's all a bit weird I don't know if it's because of the street lighting or if it's because they've realised that they're a bit more open to prying eyes walking past than they thought. Maybe it's a temporary thing, maybe they're decorating, who knows, I don't know. Um, but that's a, a bit weird. But if I was on the ground floor, I would be making sure that I had something up at my windows. But black plastic sacks seems a bit odd. They still sound like they're still cleaning and getting organised. But I think they're in there, I think they've moved in. Anyway, so um, got a lot to do today. Um, Saturday was a bit of a washout. I'd slept really well on Friday night after I got back from my car camping. Had a really good night. Morning was fine. I went and did my clean. It was a bit warm in there. It was 26 degrees in the building, even though the temperature outside is cold. And my energy started to flag because it was just so warm and I'm cleaning three floors of a building. And then I came back, I did some lunch. Um, I listed a load of vintage stuff um, I've st I listed all the vintage clothes and I've started cleaning the shoes and the bags that need to go on. Um, and then about three o'clock, my energy just crashed big time. And I don't know it's because of the extra sugar I've consumed over the last couple of days because I bought stuff while I was car camping. I bought those croissants and I bought those um, white chocolate cookies and I've... Now that I've got snacking under control, I've been looking at trying to reduce my sugar intake. So I've banned the sugar, the sugary stuff in my morning coffee. I'm fine with that now. I've actually got used to having normal coffee that isn't sweet. And I thought my energy levels felt good, felt okay. And despite doing a lot of walking on my car camping trip, I did... Uh, an average of about 20,000 steps on each day. I was full of energy, I was fine, didn't have any problems. Um, and then just Saturday afternoon just crashed. And it started at about three, by half five, I could not get off the sofa. And I was like that until I went to bed and I eventually gave up about half past 10 and went to bed. Slept pretty well again, feel fine this morning, we'll see how we get on. Um, I'm hoping that it was just a sugar-based thing, but my energy levels are really up and down. It's a lady thing, it's a hormone thing, it's a perimenopausal thing, and for the last few years, on and off, 
I've really struggled with my energy levels, but I thought that reducing the sugar would help with this because apparently it causes massive crashes anyway in most people. So I'm going to go back to my well-behaved eating and I'm going to see where we end up. Um, so I'll let you know how I get on with that. Right, so today I'm going to be getting on with more vintage stuff um, and yeah, let's make some money. Can you hear all that? There's a massive parade going through the town today. I knew where the carnival was in town, the fun fair, but I didn't know they were doing a street parade. Loads of floats going past. I've even seen the Ghostbusters car. We've had the band. And Lots of singers and dancers, all the local troops. <laughs> Looks like the whole town's turned out to see them as well. The carnival is now doing a loop and is coming round the front. Can you hear the band? So many people on the street. Everybody's turned out for it. It's so good to see. So today is Tuesday. It's Tuesday evening, as you can tell by the terrible light. It's it's now almost five to eight, and not much light outside. Today's been horrible. The temperatures have really dropped this week. I think the night temperatures are going to get down to six degrees, which is insane, and. I didn't go out today at all until I went to do the clean at just after, well I went to Morrison's first at six and then went and did the clean after that. So I've just got back from there. And I didn't even open any of the windows in the flat today because it's been really, really windy, really cold, a lot of sideways rain. And then about four o'clock it brightened up. Anyway, so I've been and bought a few things. Not got very much. We are very much a vegetable free zone today. What did I get? There seems to be an awful lot of meats. So I have, uh, this is that Hazlitt that I've had before. This was £1.50 down to 38p. I have some chopped pork stick, God knows what that is. Was £1.8, 27p. I have cooked ham, was 150 down to 38p. And brawn, was £1.40, down to 35p. And then I have a big chunk of Somerset Brie, was £1.38, down to 35p, because I've eaten all the other cheese. And then, because I have my clean tomorrow, I've bought myself another baguette. Shouldn't have bought it, but I did. This uh, was £3, down to 75p. This is a ham and coleslaw baguette, so that will do me for when I get back. Uh, and that is it. And that all came to £2.48. So I'm interested to see what the savings are on that. It probably looks quite good. Not many items there. 
I have been like really careful with vegetables at the moment. I'm pretty much out of veg in the fridge now. I just have some mushrooms and some carrots, but I have lots in the freezers because in times of plenty, I store up because sometimes it means you won't see anything for ages, like broccoli. I love broccoli. I haven't seen broccoli at a discount for two or three weeks now, I think, but I, I did chop up and freeze several broccolis in the weeks before that so there's a few in there lots of carrots i've got um greens that i've shredded there's all sorts of things in the freezer so that's that so that's the end of tuesday um nothing else to report really just been been editing the um the results of my car camping trip which you will have seen by the time you see this if you watch all my videos and if not um, go and have a glimpse there's all sorts of fun stuff on there it ended up being three videos I did a ton of recording most of it has just been not ditched because I keep all the originals I don't delete anything and but it was still in three parts because there was just so much I was doing so much and there was so much to see and so much to to look at and talk about and it takes ages so in three days since I got back I've only managed to complete one video and that's the first one um, the second one is about halfway done and the third one I haven't even looked at yet. It takes a long time to edit so I reckon for the length of time that I record a video it takes the long to edit so if I do three hours of recording it's going to take me three hours to edit and it depends on what's involved but there's a lot of cutting stuff out. Um, I might be adding information where I've seen things where they have information and adding pictures adding maps it all takes time and tweaking videos where I have problems with the movement of the camera because it's just me and a selfie stick and I often just point and shoot and don't pay much attention so it it's really hard to keep the camera steady I guess it's one of the joys of just shooting with a mobile on stick uh, you just have to bear with that that's how I shoot and that's because that's the tech I have um, it's limited but anyway, so that's that update. That's Tuesday done. Wednesday is another day. Another clean tomorrow. I have something on Vinted, which I sold this afternoon, which I need to package up and send at some point. Uh, I probably did it Thursday morning. Cause Thursday morning, I'll go to the post office. I'll drop that Vinted thing off. And then I think I'm going to go and do a hike on Thursday, because Thursday and Friday are looking quite good weather-wise. It's going to be good weather but cold and I'm going to do something different but we'll see how we get on so watch this space catch you soon it's Saturday I don't feel like I've done anything much this week it certainly doesn't feel like I've been like really really busy I've done all my usual cleaning I crashed through all that vintage stuff that all went up for sale. I've sold quite a lot of it, which is really, really good. I've been really busy with, you know, packing up and finalising sales and all this sort of thing. So I have had a busy week, but I don't feel like I've been busy, which sounds really weird. I did go and do a walk on the Thursday, and that'll be in the next post coming up. It's kind of a hike and I went and walked part of the Peak Forest Canal which is quite nice I don't particularly like the canals as much as the moors and certainly not as much as the beach but it may be because my end of the canals isn't especially nice and I don't know if this is a problem everywhere but there's a lot of antisocial behaviour. There's a lot of rubbish. And I mean, I watch uh, Canal Boat Diaries and it looks fantastic. It looks like such a beautiful way to live. But I know that uh, 
Robbie Cumming, who's the guy who does Canal Boat Diaries, has talked in the past about problems where, you know, when you're mooring up, you're at risk of, of people coming and vandalising your boat or things like that. So I know that there are problems, and I have friends who live near canals who say they get a lot of antisocial behaviour on the canals. It just it just doesn't seem as nice as the moors, but maybe that's because that is just literally out in the middle of nowhere. Um, there won't be any more walks for a little bit because pretty soon I'm going to be going down to my parents for a couple of weeks. It's my three monthly, two week visit, so I've just been kind of starting to get organised. I'm trying to pack up some work to take with me because I had so many plans for doing some jewellery work this week and it just hasn't happened. I've just constantly run out of time where I've been sorting other things. So I'm going to take some with me. I stopped doing it a while ago because <laughs> I would take stuff down with me, not even looking at it, and it would come back again as it was, but I want to be a bit more proactive this time. So I'm taking some jewellery stuff with me. Um, it's my mum's birthday while I'm down there. And what else is happening? I don't really know what else is happening while I'm down there. I think it's just going to be a normal visit. I don't think we have any special trips planned or anything. But it'll just be nice to get away again. And then once I get back, we'll be well into October. And I have two more hikes planned that I would like to do if the weather's okay only one of them is up on a moorland but um I'm not going to do anything any more walks before I go away because I'm trying to hang on to the petrol that I've got I've been really busy this week as well sorting out bank accounts so I've been They've been talking in the news about how they think the bank, the interest rates are going to drop again fairly soon. And I've basically been grabbing every single bank account I can, savings account that has uh, fixed interest, anything that's above 5% I've been taking. Most of them are regular savers. And those can be any amount between, you can put in between 50 and 400 a month. I quite like the regular savers. Most of them are fixed rate. Most of them are fixed for a year. But it means that as those rates continue to drop, I've got that above 5% rate that I'm that now tied into. And because it's small amounts of money, and because I have other savings accounts which are waiting to mature, I can drop those amounts in. I have a, a, a new easy access saver with Ulster Bank um, or Ulster Bank NatWest. And that's had a really good rate, but that's starting to drop now. So what I do is I use the drip feed effect, which is you have all your the savings that you have in an easy access with a higher interest rate. So mine is currently, I think it's 5.65 or 5.2. I know it's dropping again soon. So I keep it all in there. And then each month I drip feed those smaller amounts into the higher rate fixed savings and some of the fixed ones I've got a which is the one that I've just taken out I think it, it's a Santander it's only £50 a month but it's 8% now I've now got a bunch of these little regular savers which are small amounts of money going out every month which means I can manage my money because every month I have income coming in so I can let those small amounts they sit in the Easy Access account when I've earned them, and then I can pull them across in small amounts into the regular savers, and then in a year's time, I will get all that money back. So most of my regular saver accounts now will mature next August. And the rates aren't going to be better next year. The rates are going to drop. We've got all sorts of awful things to come. We've got the October budget. They're threatening to get rid of you know the 25% the council tax reduction for single people um, they're talking about this um, pence per mile on driving <sighs> we've got the energy bills going up 10 percent on the first of october there's just so many financial challenges coming and i 
I already have money tied up in savings that I can't get at. So I've I've got a, a private pension, I've got a, a stocks and shares ISA, but I need to make sure that I am not putting so much of my savings into accounts I can't access that if something happens I then don't have any money to fall back on. So I've tried to be really careful about where I've put money. All of the fixed rate saver accounts that I've got mature within the next year so if I run into problems uh, I've got one that's a six month account so that will come out in January because I've had that for a bit already so that puts another chunk back into my account and because I run spreadsheets I can see all that money going out every month to say regular saver accounts and I can see when it's coming back into the main account because those accounts have matured so I know that I'm always still carrying a balance in my account and of course now that my rent has now been moved over to monthly payments rather than every six months I can juggle that money better because I'm only losing a certain amount of money uh, to rent each month rather than a massive great chunk in one go and then I'm stuck with not having that amount again. Which also means that the money for my rent that's still left in my access accounts is still earning some interest. So I'm just juggling figures and that's why I run spreadsheets and I, I really like running spreadsheets, I enjoy spreadsheets. and. It just means that I can keep an eye on everything. I'm not leaving myself short. And all that sort of thing. Uh, incomes are slowly increasing. I'm doing well on vintage now because other people are giving me their stuff that they don't want. That's how I earn on that. And I do put that through my books as a business because it's it's part of what my business does is to buy and sell secondhand clothing. Um... So that has increased a bit. Now I've got my new cleaning job. That means that that's going up a bit. There are all sorts of little things going up. And I'm now earning more projection-wise. It looks like I'm going to earn more this year than I thought I was going to. It's not an enormous amount of extra, but there is more coming in. And that projects on well for next year. And particularly with the savings, because I can already project how much money I'm going to earn in savings next year based on all those fixed accounts I've got. And I can see that for next year, I've already earned more interest on my savings next year than I have already this year. So I can make those kinds of predict predictions and add that to my forecast. And then I know where the gaps are because my universal credit has now ended. I have a gap of money to fill. And if I can project for next year's income based on all my income streams, I can see how short that's going to be. And every time things are improving, it's a little less that I have to find next year. So that Universal Credit is effectively replaced by all the other jobs that I'm doing. So, that was a bit of a ramble. I wasn't expecting to say all that. <laughs> but that's what my week's been, really. It's been mostly about focusing on building funds ready for next year. Seeing how uh, rises in the energy bills are going to affect me. I reckon my bill, it reckons my bill is going to go up by about £30 a year, which isn't too much. And that's because I have such low energy usage because um, I don't use it. There was one account that I was thinking of changing to. It's called Eon, I think it's called Eon Insure, and it's better for lower users because it's got a reduced standing charge on it but you've got to have a smart meter and I won't do that I won't have a smart meter um, so I'm not going to get that but it probably would have been negligible income wise anyway I might still have a look at the calculator and see how big that saving is going to be but we'll see I mean, my energy usage is still, at the moment, projected to be less than £500 for the year, and that's dual fuel. You do what you can. You've got to look at, you look at your ins and your outs, and you have to work it out. If you want to get better at managing your money, you need to embrace ways to do that so you can see what's coming and see what's going and balance things up, and then you don't have any nasty shocks at the end, and that's... I like doing that. I don't like having any nasty financial shocks, so I do my best to project where I can. And usually I'm 
pretty much spot on. So that's why my week has been busy but not so interesting I suppose. Next week is going to be a normal week, no walking next week and I'm prepping for going down to my parents so that'll be fun, fun time's coming. <laughs>